Uh, welcome! Huawei P50 Pro versus iPhone 30 Pro. Who has the better camera system? Without further ado, let's get started. Let's quickly talk about the specifications of those cameras. So on the iPhone 13 Pro we have three triple 12 megapixel sensors so we have the main we have a tele we have an ultra wide 30 megapixel one and on the p50 pro we have a little bit more we have a main 50 megapixel one we have a 40 megapixel monochrome one we have a 30 megapixel ultra wide and we have a 64 megapixel te periscope tele zoom camera here on the P50 Pro. I will also show you all the specifications left and right so you can read everything here right now. Um, keep in mind that the P50 Pro either ships with different uh, sensors to what I have heard is that maybe the Snapdragon version has a different sensor than the Kirin version, but maybe they also send out a different versions. So I'm just writing that down, what I heard from Huawei officials that say it's an IMX 766, so it's a Sony sensor. But there are speculation going on that it might be an OV50A sensor as well. And uh, I think there were others writing at the Sony IMX 700, which is like the very large sensor. Anyway, uh, you can choose whatever and to believe whatever you like to believe in. Um, that is the current situation. If someone, as long as no one is opening it up and uh, measuring uh, what the sensor actually is, uh, there's nothing new to report here. So now we had uh, roughly two minutes time to figure out uh, all the specifications. Let's take a look at video samples and then let's talk about photos. Let's start with the Huawei P50 Pro's the main camera lens and uh, it's in one over 1.5 inch sized sensor. I hope at least that this is the case. Anyway, it's a very large sensor. You get this nice creamy bokeh, you get this good high dynamic range, which I really like. And you have this good auto focusing system that will can focus very quickly on things. And I really, really like also the stabilization on the Huawei P50 Pro, but you be the judge. What about the colors? Is my skin color correct? Is the iPhone maybe better? We will take a look at the iPhone right now right after this year and what about hdr what about stabilization who is the better who's the king supreme in the camera department when it comes to vlogging with the main camera lens uh, this is a recording with the iphone 13 pro and uh, the main camera sensor 12 megapixels full hd 60 what do you think about the background what do you think about the hdr what do you think about the stabilization and colors write it down in the comment section is it good for vlogging do i get a nice little background blur is it good in terms of focusing and is it also good in terms of uh, stabilization uh, this is a uh, one over 1.65 inch size sensor i got it from huawei who listed all the sensor sizes and also the one from the iphone 13 pro because it's, i did find it anywhere listed uh, elsewhere so if it's wrong blame huawei for this they did it uh, they showed it up even in a presentation to compare their no new nova 9 phone with the iphone 13 so yeah this is what you can expect in terms of video quality 1080p 60 on 60 frames per second on the iPhone 13 Pro. Plain, damn plain. We're now the ultra wide angle of the Huawei P50 Pro and this one has only 30 frames per second no matter which resolution so I'm at 4k resolution right now it will be downscaled on the timeline to uh, 1080p but only 30 frames per second because it cannot do 60 frames per second for some odd reason that I don't get anyway this is what you can expect in terms of colors in terms of HDR in terms of stabilization I think it's a pretty good vlogging camera you can put yourself into the vlog you can put someone else into the vlog and the cool thing is it has autofocus so if I have something to show up close I can do it or I can show you for example these flowers here up in a very very close uh, manner some HDR like capabilities as well so I get very very close and you can see it is still sharp 
which is I think pretty pretty cool especially if you have something in your vlog that you want to show close up like miniature kind of cars or uh, paintings or whatever you are doing with your phone and want to do a nice little vlog you can do with the p50 pros ultra wide angle which works pretty nice sadly not in 60 frames per second what do you think about this quality write it down in the comment section and now the ultra wide angle of the apple iphone 13 pro and the cool thing about this is it can do 4k 60 frames per second yippee so it has an advantage in terms of video 4k 60 frames per second and even uh, hd 60 frames per second are possible on this camera so it is a notch over the um, huawei p50 pro that can only do 4k 30 frames per second no 60 frames per second maybe they will do an update that allows this to do uh, this with this lens otherwise it has focusing so i can go here and show you this little thing here uh, so it has also close-up focusing it's used for macro photo photography so it can also perform very close-up shots with the ultra wide angle how wide is the field of view how is hdr how are colors and so on write it down in the comment section now the zoom to test with the Huawei P50 Pro. I want to zoom in on this smartphone to read my email. I know not a very scientific or very yeah, accurate or useful test, but I want to read this email so badly that I zoom in roughly three times now. And it's a bit of grainy, I would say. Let's go to five times. Looks a bit better. And you can go up to 10 times and yeah really i can read stuff here and it's pretty stable i would say awesome now the zoom test with the iphone i uh, know it is uh yeah uh, probably not the same distance um, uh, photo length wise but let's go to three times zoom here this is three times zoom and i can go up to nine times zoom and i think yeah, i can also still read the stuff here it's a bit more wobbly than on the Huawei I have the feeling but still I can read stuff cool front-facing video test on the uh, Huawei P50 Pro 4k 60 frames per second yeah you hear it right it's 4k 60 frames per second that you can do on the front-facing camera this is a true flagship great front-facing camera it has some nice features just like for example ultra wide if you don't want to yeah uh, if you want to see everything if you want to see more of the garden here behind me but if i don't want you to show more of the garden i can go to one times and now some things are hidden uh, i can also go to the default which is 0 0.8 times and this is i think the perfect vlogging distance and if i want to show you something on my iphone i also have like something called product showcase no uh, this is another product uh, i have auto focusing on the front facing camera so as you can see here if i hold this here in the front uh, it will be focused upon which is pretty nice i can hold it even closer you can see maybe the sub pickles and pickles there yeah, the pixels and here the uh, i can show you this where they make the notch smaller on the iphone 13 pretty nice i think it's pretty cool for vlogging and uh, 4k 60 frames per second is pretty cool um, uh, the, the stabilization suffers a little bit though 4k 60 frames per second now on the iphone 13 pro and i don't have any zoom features at all so i cannot zoom in or zoom out can i let's try it nee. There's no zoom, uh, there are no buttons at least to zoom in and out and pinch to zoom is not working at all. And um, yeah, I think maybe HDR is a bit better. How stabilization? I'm not so sure, but it has 4K 60 frames uh, as well. So these are one of the few phones that have this capability of 4K 60 frames per second. How about autofocusing? This is really interesting for me. Does it have autofocusing? Uh, doesn't look to me it has autofocusing. Does it have autofocusing? Uh, at least not so close focusing distance as is it even mirrored maybe huh it would be odd so my face is sharp but the phone itself is not sharp the pixels are not sharp so i don't think it has auto focusing 
uh, on the front, which is a bit of a bummer, I would say, on the iPhone. This would make it like an ideal vlogging and product showcase kind of thing if it had auto-focusing on the front as well. Otherwise, yeah, it's also pretty stable, pretty good, pretty awesome. The uh, wide-angle field of view, or the angle of view, is, I think, also roughly about 0 0.8. Maybe it's 0 0.9 instead of 1 times when directly comparing to the Huawei. Um, but what do you think about the colors? What do you think about the uh, stabilization on the iPhone's front-facing camera? And now the new cinematic mode with the iPhone 13 Pro. It adds a nice little fake bokeh. And if I look somewhere else, it should maybe focus somewhere else. I don't know if it does this. Uh, anyway, uh, the fake bokeh by default uses an f2. Point, what is it? 2.5 or 2.8 aperture. So this is what you can expect. The natural background blur would be enough for me, I have to say honestly. But yeah, how does this look like with this fake background blur? And does it have any issues? This only records in 1080p, and I'm not even sure it's 1080p 60 frames per second. I think it's only 1080p 30 frames per second with the main lens. And you can also use the zoom lens, but the ultra wide angle is not possible. But you can use this uh, mode also with the front-facing camera if you want to. And this is now the Huawei, Huawei P50 Pro. It doesn't have cinematic mode, but it has the background blur filter, which also blurs out the background if it detects one. And uh, yeah, how is the filter working? How good is it in comparison to the iPhone? Uh, I didn't see a setting for the f-stop number there for the background blur to adjust it. Maybe it's possible in post-production. I don't really know if it's possible. We'll just blend it in here. Otherwise, how good it does this look like? It's also only 1080p, 30 frames per second. So the same kind of limitations as the iPhone has. Uh, which one is more convincing? This one here is already the second or third generation of background blur that at least uh, was released in the third generation of smartphones already. I'm not sure if they improved it anyway from the Mate 30 Pro to here the P50 Pro. Uh, just tell me what do you think about this fake background in video mode. And a small microphone test on the Huawei P50 Pro. How does the microphone sound there using the front facing camera as well? Uh, for this little mic test to see which microphone has the better sound. I think the P50 Pro has a slight edge because it has a more sophisticated sound system. But you can tell me in the comment section what do you think, who has the better uh, microphones, uh, internal microphones for capturing sound, for example, for vlogging situations. So this is the cinematic mode on the front-facing camera of the iPhone and I have, uh, this is a good thing on the iPhone, you can set the uh, depth effect. So I have set it to, what is it, 5.6 right now as the depth, which is a little bit more uh, uh, realistic in terms of uh, background blur and I think it looks a little bit better. You can also dial it up to f8 or something like this then you have like only slight background blur on the front cam which looks a bit more realistic then because the cutouts then are a bit more realistic but of course uh, you can just take the back cam without the cinematic mode and then have also this nice background blur for vlogging for example uh, but you have it on the front cam which uh, the p50 uh, pro doesn't have so the background blur mode here is not configurable and only has the uh, back cam, the main cam that it can use for um, the AI background blur. Uh, this is by the way also recorded without, uh, without this microphone because it is not attached to anything and uh, just to try out how the microphone sounds on the iPhone 13 Pro without an external microphone attached. Here we have the photos on the left, the P50 Pro, and on the right, the iPhone 13 Pro, always. So, first of all, let's talk about what I photographed here. Uh, it is mid-autumn festival in China, so we had some mooncakes, and uh, yeah, before the cut, after the cut. First of all, what we notice directly on first glance is a different color profile. So we have more punchy colors on the left with the P50 and on the iPhone 13, we have a bit more co well, cool down, less color basically in the shot itself. When we take a look at the sharpness, we can see that the main mooncake is a little bit sharper on the 
P50 Pro. And when we go to the left here, you can see that also this one, the little one, is a bit sharper on the P50 Pro. But down here, I think the iPhone found its sharp point or had its sharp point with the uh, mooncake here. What we can see with the color layout is also we have a more yellowish color on the P50 Pro. Some might say, okay, this uh, background shouldn't be yellow, it should be white. Yes, but we had a yellow light, so this is why I think the P50 Pro has the colors more right. It is too punchy. Yeah, I can tell you this is too punchy, but on the right it is just like lacking colors. It's not lively at all, so it is like, yeah, not really looking good, I would say. If I have to edit this, because I had to have to edit anyway, uh, then I would start from the Huawei P50 Pro ones and just tone down the vibrance of the colors a little bit and then I would get a perfect shot. Otherwise I don't think the iPhone 1 has the colors right. I have to do much more editing to get the iPhone 1 right. And you can see this throughout all the other pictures as well. I know the iPhone 13 Pro has also more vibrant color profiles. So if you want to choose a more vibrant color profile you can do this as well. But what I'm doing here right now is uh, comparing one to one what you can see uh, when you just say, okay, I have everything automatic, I have everything out of the box. And uh, otherwise, you, I would have to compare like also the shot with Huawei AI Assistant disabled and then the other uh, three or four different color profiles of the iPhone 13 Pro. So this is not what I'm doing here right now. Let's take another shot and we see here also a big difference, first of all, in terms of how close you can get with the cameras before they switch to the macro camera. So on the right, on the iPhone 13, I think it switched to the macro camera. Both switch to the macro camera automatically. It doesn't matter if you have the main camera lens activated or not, or um, yeah, it will directly switch to the macro camera if you get a bit close. And you can see I got a little bit closer then after I noticed it switched to the macro camera to get like a macro shot on the iPhone 13 Pro and on the left the P50 Pro still is using its main sensor. You can see it from the background blur, that's large main sensor. When it comes to the details and the colors, first of all the colors. The colors, I think the P50 Pro clearly has too much red here. The details is, detail is lost. You can see it here and compare it to the iPhone one. Even though I think the iPhone 1 made too much contrast, put too much, too much contrast in the whole image here, um, which the um, P50 Pro didn't do. It overdid it with the colors a little bit. I can show you later how the flower should look like. In general, I would say it's a bit too darkish on the iPhone here uh, when it comes to the colors. So both failed in terms of colors. But when it comes to accuracy of colors, closer to reality is the P50 Pro. When it comes to details, detail level here with the macro cam on the iPhone 13 Pro and the main cam on the P50 Pro, I think the P50 Pro did a better job. You can yeah, see more details here in the shot. You can see also the color difference again. It's the same flower. And uh, yeah, you can see also the, the, the amount of uh, darkness, the amount of contrast that the... Um, iPhone 13 Pro added here. And let's take a look at the another shot here, a bokeh shot. I think the iPhone did a pretty good job here. Same distance, you can see the iPhone is a bit closer because it has a narrower field of view and you get a bit more creamier bokeh because you are closer to the subject that you want to photograph. In terms of details, it looks pretty good, pretty awesome. Uh, I'm a bit further away here. Uh, at least visually further away, not physically. Physically I'm at the same spot and the composition is a little bit different because the camera position on the lens, is, uh, the, the, the camera position, the lens position is a bit different than on the iPhone. But uh, you get like a different view. It's still good. It doesn't have as creamy bokeh as the iPhone. And when we take a look at the detail level, it is far superior here on the P50 Pro. Um, you can see much more details here on this little orange and uh, the pores here, the, 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 it's just sharper. Everything is sharper. And uh, yeah, I think if you zoom out, the iPhone one looks a little bit more artistic, but I can achieve the same thing, but just by changing the angle a little bit on the uh, P50 Pro, getting a bit closer. And then I have like almost the same shot as on the iPhone. So clear winner here in terms of sharpness, definitely the P50 Pro, but in terms of composition, I think the iPhone 1 here. 
Um, then three times zoom here, three and a half times zoom optically on the P50 Pro and three times zoom optically on the iPhone. When I zoom in here to check for the text, uh, you can see that the iPhone has a little bit of sharper text, I would say. There's a bit of kind of smearing and a bit of haze going on here on the text. You can see in the three and a half times optical zoom on the P50 Pro. And when we zoom in, um, sorry, this is, uh, go back here. If I zoom in, which was closer here, uh, yeah. if I zoom in uh, three times on the um, P50 Pro to have like the same kind of field of view, you can see it's still a bit hazy and uh, the iPhone's uh, optical zoom is a bit sharper. Then when we take a look at the five times digital zoom on both, we can see on first glance the iPhone looks a bit better, but if you zoom in, you can see why it looks a bit better because it just smeared everything and made ha applied heavily uh, some kind of uh, sharpening filter and you can see it here with the text itself if you compare it to the p50 pro ones it's much more natural uh, you can see the little dots here on the packaging itself that has been smoothed out here on the iphone so more details definitely in zoom capabilities on the p50 pro the p50 pro simply blows away the iphone in terms of zoom capability even though it has only a three and a half times optical zoom but it's using all the sensors and this helps a lot. Let's take a look at HDR, both shots, first glance, super HDR shots, no issue at all. When we take a look at the colors, we can see a bit toned down colors here again on the iPhone, a bit more lively colors on the P50 Pro. Again, the P50 Pro comes closer to reality, even though the vibrance is a bit too high here. When we take a look at the details here, for example, we can also see a color shift. It's a bit cooled down here and a bit more white on the iPhone, the stones here. And the stonework here is a bit more yellowish. I have to say, again, the P50 Pro comes closer to reality because the stones are a bit more yellowish than white. When we take a look at the, um, at the roof here, at the rooftop, you can see a bit more details. I'm not sure if it's artificial um, sharpness applied or not. And you can see it's also in the tree here that there's a bit more sharpness on the P50 Pro. And when we take a look at the sky itself where the sun is shining, you can see that the sky, the, the clouds are much more defined and much more clear to see on the P50 Pro. So in terms of high dynamic range, I think the P50 Pro has its edge over the iPhone 13, but both good in HDR in terms of shots. When we take a look at close-up shots, this is a bit of tricky. Both use a system where they automatically switch to the macro cam when they deem it necessary. Uh, in this shot, I got a little bit closer with the iPhone uh, 13 Pro's macro cam and the um, Huawei macro cam can got, get closer as well, but in this case I couldn't get it closer, but because if I got closer, it was switching back to the main cam and made the, my main subject uh, blurry and was focusing on the background or something like this. So in terms of colors, we have a more warm kind of color here on the iPhone 13 Pro. And we have a bit more cooled down color here on the P50 Pro. Again, the P50 Pro is closer to reality because the flower is more white than yellow. Uh, when we zoom in, we can see the details, very good details on the iPhone 13 Pro and a bit of blacking here on the P50 Pro. First of all, because the P50 Pro was a bit further away, but also in terms of details, I think the P50 Pro simply loses here to the iPhone 13 Pro. So in general, I would say the iPhone 13 Pro has a bit of a notch over the P50 Pro when it comes to the zoom capabilities for uh, close-up shots, so macro shots, basically. Let me take a look at another macro shot. In this case, I could zoom in a little bit closer. It's a smaller flower, but I could get closer with the P50 Pro uh, where the macro cam was still used. And on the iPhone, I, if I got any closer, it would switch bug out and switch to, to the main lens and then doesn't um, like this subject at all to, to make it sharp. When it comes to detail level or colors, first of all, colors look almost the same. You get the more contrasty, punchy uh, look, a no, contrasty look on the iPhone, more punchy colors usually on the P50 Pro. In this case, I think on the macro cam, we have almost the same colors. There's a bit of a warmer look here on the green 
as you can see, it's a bit cooled down, a bit darker, but could be also the contrast added. When we zoom in, 100%, not sharp, not sharp at all. <laughs> it's just a bit more contrast on the iPhone, which mm, some would perceive as, ah, it's a bit sharper. Uh, the same goes for the for the leaves it's, it's as well. It's a bit more contours pronounced because of the uh, added contrast that it has. In general, both are good for macro shots, but you have to get it right because it's automatically switching. Uh, and uh, even on the P50 Pro, there's no super macro mode that I can find that I can manually switch on. So it's using automatically macro detection the same way as the iPhone 13 does. When it comes to this flower, we can see big color difference in terms of red again. Red is always a problem for smartphone cameras or for cameras in general. And in this case, uh, you can see more contrasty look, more... Um, darker look on the iPhone 13 that comes closer to reality here in this case and we have a bit more too much red here definitely in terms of sharpness both equally sharp but I have to say the iPhone one looks uh, a bit sharper because it has this more contrasty kind of look and here we have the overblown red that is like bleeding almost and has like a glow over the flower itself which uh, makes it a bit more unsharp. When we take a look at the, the the leaf next to it, you can see it's almost the same sharpness. There's not much difference also in terms of details. Uh, we have three and a half times optical zoom on the left and we have three times optical zoom on the right. So this is a big difference. Background blur is almost the same. There's maybe a little bit more background blur on the P50 Pro, but that's almost everything. The thing is, like like I said before, they both don't have realistic colors. If I go in here, this color is, uh, yeah, it's still a bit too punchy. It's still a bit too different. But the interesting thing is I thought, okay, uh, it's easy to switch off the AI assistant on the Huawei phone. And a day later, I just did this and took another shot of this flower. And with AI disabled, after rain, of course, the leaves look a bit different, but the, the, just take a look at the color. You can see that there's a color difference. It's more vibrant color. It's a more punchy color on the iPhone and it's a bit more cold down to, yeah, it, it's more realistic on the P50 Pro, definitely. So this color of this flower is more realistic. So in general, I would say if you want more realistic colors, on the P50 Pro, disable the AI assistant you get. If you have red color, for example, not this over punchy look, but you get more realistic colors, even more realistic than the iPhone in its default profile. I know that there are other profiles you probably can get also a more realistic color. In terms of detail level here also in this, uh, yeah, it's it's very interesting to see that I see a bit more detail on the P50 Pro here, but it was taken a day after. So maybe something changed here as well. The composition changed as well a bit. Uh, so yeah, in general, uh, both are good. Um, the iPhone comes a bit closer by default uh, to reality because this is like just simply overblown uh, red. Both are good. Both are good in sharpness as well. And... Uh, when it comes to nighttime photography, this is very interesting. Here we have like um, a shot of a subject. The P50 Pro managed to grab it and it's sharp. In this case, it's just a yeah, tripod. And the iPhone not. And what you can see here is already grain on the iPhone. Uh, well, what you don't see on or don't see so much on the P50 Pro, you can see it has some algorithm to, to get the grain, get rid of the grain. Of, Maybe the iPhone, one could argue, has a bit more natural grain, but uh, the difference as well is that there's a bit, it's a bit brighter on the left and a bit more yellowish on the left. Again, more realistic because there's a yellow light and the iPhone for some reason tries to uh, get the yellow light and make it white. Um, both have no night mode activated, it's just a low light uh, photo. Here we have uh, also a photo where the night mode kicked in on the iPhone and there's no night mode. Uh, the night mode didn't kick in on the P50 Pro. And it's interesting that the P50 Pro with its RYYB sensor, the 50 megapixel sensor, is able to capture so much light information and has uh, the better exposure here. The iPhone is too yellowish. Here I would say, because this time there was no lamp on or something like this, it's too grainy, it's not very sharp here. And if you compare it here with the P50 Pro, you can even read what is written on this little uh, flashlight here. Uh, if you twist your head a bit, and uh, yeah, it is. Uh, it looks just simply better on the P50 Pro 
in uh, low light and then we can go to extreme low light now this is not extreme low light but this is where the night mode usually kicks in and the interesting part here is on the right i use the night mode on the iphone and this is how it looks like this is the sharpness that you can get and on the left i didn't use the night mode i just used the standard mode night mode didn't kick in which 99 percent it doesn't <laughs> and I have a brighter picture, sharper picture, more details in the picture and uh, more realistic colors as well. So the P50 Pro is a low light monster and the iPhone cannot really beat it even if it tries to. This one uh, selfie with the main camera not the uh, not the selfie cam uh, shot and again the iPhone tries to make everything what is yellow a bit uh, white so you can see here it might be a bit greenish this was a slit open door with a yellow uh, light bulb and yeah it made it a little bit greenish you can see it here in the background as well that this is should be red but uh, or here this should be white and it's a bit more greenish and here it uh, yeah took the yellow and combined it with the red a bit so i have a bit of a red face it might be more realistic i'm not sure but this white looks more realistic to me uh, but skin color iPhone wins here uh, details maybe the p50 pro again the iPhone uh, got into its um, night mode the p50 pro not uh, let's go to the next one which is like ultra low light darkness and I took a shot for this wine box and you can see yellowish unsharp grainy here we have a bit of color grain i would say on the color noise on the um, p50 pro but the p50 pro also didn't use night mode for this one just to, and in terms of sharpness i think yeah the iphone didn't manage to do anything good here and yeah the p50 pro a little bit better i think than the iphone and uh, at least it got the color right which is also interesting and i think also the background here it's more readable than than here but it's very very close i have to say but yeah the dark parts here are still defined here so the p50 pro did a better job this is the p50 pro in absolute darkness basically and again main camera and you can see my skin color looks good okay if i zoom in it's like ah okay you see the algorithm doing its job and working there and making it uh, noise free and uh, when i go now to the iphone you can see oh the iphone has a bit of this yellowish tint again but looks maybe a bit brighter but this has something to do again the i the the, the iphone i had to like stand there this is why i look like crazy here as well i had to stand like for four or five seconds like this uh, for it to take the night shot mode otherwise it will be blurry and if i don't take the night shot mode this is what the iphone produces which is like yeah unusable i would say see how much it's grainy and this is without the night mode on the p50 pro i don't even need to activate the night mode on the p50 pro i forget it's just so good uh, then uh, next one is ultra wide angle uh, with night mode on the uh, on, on both in this case and uh, you can see no not on both <laughs> in this case because the night mode doesn't kick in at all on the p50 pro in auto mode on the iphone it does uh, and you can see yeah uh, almost invisible here and here i had to trigger the night mode and you can see yeah we have color grain here uh, but still the ultra wide angle i think it looks a bit if i have now nah, it's both useless but uh, yeah you decide on your own which one did a better shot here then again night mode i didn't want to go outside but i photographed something through the window you can clearly see the reflections going on here uh, almost the same i would say in terms of night mode when i zoom in a little bit you can see that the p50 pro has an edge over the iphone uh, more sharpness here here a bit more grainy and uh, yeah less details in general so this is basically everything yes this is basically everything in terms of uh, photography um, the iphone and the p50 pro what do you think what is your favorite here what is the favorite colors that you saw uh, write it down in the comment section so huawei p50 pro or 
iPhone 13 Pro, who has the better camera system? You can write it down in the comment section because I think they are very, very close in certain scenarios. I like the iPhone colors in certain scenarios a little bit better. In terms of photos, I think they are a bit more eye-pleasing, but also more unrealistic. And Huawei does a bit more realistic colors, especially because it has like a special color filter for doing this. Uh, otherwise, what do you think about those in terms of video? I think they are really top-notch phones in terms of photos and videos so both very very close together but if i have to crown a winner it is really really slightly the huawei p50 pro but the iphone 13 pro comes very very close to it uh, what do you think write it down in the comment section that is everything for this video if you like like this video if you want to share it share it as well and subscribe that helps me to get more subscribers to get more more uh, subscribers like this one here thank you for subscribing this was fast uh, that helps me to get more testing devices and to perform more of those independent tests here i hope you like this video thank you for watching until the next time bye